of this distance squared, and what is this part? It's the real part, right? That's four. Plus this distance squared, seven. Um, wasn't seven on? Hmm? Yeah, but I squared is one, right? I squared is negative one. Negative one? <laughs> yeah. But look at the geometry of this. What's this distance? Four. What's this distance? Seven. So, what's the hypothesis? Why did you put the I in there? Because I is not the distance. I is imaginary part means the numbers are multiplied by I. Okay. What's on this is multiplied by I. So it would be square root of 16 plus 49, 16, 5. Okay, the magnitude of minus 3 plus 5 would be square root minus 3 squared plus 2 squared and I will square root of something. Okay? So that's the magnitude of a complex. What about the argument? The argument is this angle. Okay? So the magnitude is the distance in this plot. Argument is this angle. And you can express an angle as a tan inverse, but also a sine inverse, or a cosine inverse, or cotan inverse, etc. So, argument This relationship means 
that I can rewrite any complex number in an alternative polar form. You can rewrite any complex number a plus i times b as the magnitude of the complex number times e to the i argument of the complex number. Let's do it. I will show you that. I will show you. So, this is an important relation. Very critical when we talk about frequency response. Take any complex number, instead of writing it, a plus ib, you can rewrite magnitude e to the i argument. And this is a quick thing to show. So, here is how I show it. I'll simply work on the right hand side, and using this equation, I'll show that I get the left. Okay? So on the right hand side, magnitude times e to the i argument a. That is equal. We know the magnitude, we understood from the plot and everything, is the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. Everybody okay with that? And e to the i argument using that is going to be cosine of theta. So what's the theta, the argument? So cosine of the argument of the complex number, and that's the angle, plus i times sine of the argument. Are you okay, everyone? Are you doing okay? Mm -hmm. And I wrote above several ways the argument. What would be a good one to choose for cosine? Let me pick cosine inverse here. So for argument, I'll pick here cosine inverse of a over square root a squared plus b squared. Okay? So that's the cosine of the argument, and I pick for the argument. This one. You want to be better? Do you want to be better? Yeah, I missed that part. So I what, what part did you, you miss here? I, I just wasn't focused at the moment. Oh, okay, then there you go. The argument is this answer. So the cosine inverse is exactly for that. So sine of sine inverse of b over the square root a squared plus b squared. Okay? Is it okay? So equals the square root of a squared plus b squared is Multiplying everything. What's cosine of cosine inverse something? Something. So a over square root a squared plus b squared plus i and sine of sine inverse something is something. B squared. 
square root of a square plus b square. Cancels equals a plus i b. So that means you can take any complex number and write it in polar. So for example, I can take minus 6 plus 4i. I can rewrite the square root of 6 squared plus 4 squared times e to the i of and I can choose any of those forms. I'll pick now the inverse of 4 over minus 6. In other words, square root 36 plus 1652 times e to the i sum inverse of minus 2 thirds. The word that and that's, you can put the minus plus i tan inverse. Uh, so the this is square square of 52. The word the the minus the 6 plus 4 i come from. 6 minus 6 plus 4. That's just, just an example. No, okay. Or for uh, a and b. Yeah, that's an example. You can take any complex number and write it instead of the Cartesian form in the polar form. You missed two, I think you missed the two bars there. Oh no, never mind. I just wrote that in the square root of the question. How are we doing? You've seen this before sometime, right? Yeah. So a long time ago. Definitely come to you're right. A long time ago. Yeah, a long time ago, we got to see part five. Alright, so that's the review I wanted to give you for complex numbers. And let's go back here. Now, now you understand what I'm saying when I say magnitude of g of i omega and argument of g of i omega. The moment I replace s by i omega, G of i omega is a complex number. Okay? <laughs> so easy you put them to sleep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, that's not complex. As I said, I could even sign the home for you to prove it. I can make it. No. But uh, let's. I thought we agreed on no. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I said I'm not going to say no. But how would we show that the amplitude ratio is that and the phase line is that? Well, remember the dictionary. The dictionary shows, expanded dictionary has this matrix. But A sine omega D has transfer function, it has Laplace transfer. I guess of this sign. Sine omega D has Laplace transfer. Omega over S plus A squared plus omega squared. Remember that? And we have the alternate. Uh, partial fractions expansion that you did in the in-class exercise, and I believe also in the exam. Wait, what did I give you just read? No, I gave you that. So, how am I going to show that the ultimate response? So, what I'm saying here is, let's see what
we'll say z equals a sine omega. The ultimate output is y of t as t goes to t. And I'll put a sub u here to indicate ultimate output. So I'm saying that y ultimate t is going to be b sine omega t plus t, but b can be rewritten as a times b over a sine omega t plus t. b over a is what? That's the amplitude. ratio, which I'm telling you, So that's your magic proof that you were going to sign for homework? Hmm? That's the proof that you were going to sign for uh -huh. homework? How can we show that? What method have we learned in class that we, we try to use to show that? How can I find y of t? Can I find y of t? We know how to find y of t, right? And then take the limit as t goes to infinity. And the limit as t goes to infinity of y of t will be y ultimate of t. Right? That's how I could do it. And I would use the three steps. First, Laplace last form of input. Then, oh, I should have said z prime. Change that into C prime. Everything is deviation. Okay. Why not? So. First, then write what Y prime bar is, and then invert. Let me walk you through what it would get if we did. Okay. Okay. So. And I'm thinking to keep things simple, to ignore delay, and take what? all poles to be multiplicity one. I just want you to conceptually understand how it comes. I'm not going to do the video. 